So what this really all comes down to is funding. Uh, right now, there's a variety of great online resources out there, better and better courses, uh, interesting ways to approach teaching, but you've got to find a way for individual kids to access those materials and be able to use public dollars to do so if you want to see this really fulfill its potential and go to scale. So this gets into the question of how are we going to fund these things? And very quickly, you're going to get into similar conversations we have in other areas of education reform, which is that we've got to have some kind of uh, weighted student funding system where the money follows a child. Ideally, uh, disadvantaged kids get more money than other kids do. And it's got to end up in the provider of their choice, including these online models. Uh, this also implies that the current system where we've got this fragmented system, some money from local districts, some money from the states, uh, doesn't work very well. We'd be better off, frankly, if the states provided all the money in education. It'd make it a lot easier for that to follow kids to any choice they wanted, including these online options. So the most pressing issue in virtual learning, I think the first thing to back off and, and recognize that virtual learning is growing at an exceedingly fast pace. In higher ed, we're looking at 20, 25% of all courses being taken online. That number continues to grow even while enrollments are kind of flattening out. At high school and in, in uh, K through eight, we're continuing to see not nearly as much, but we're definitely continuing to see the growth. So the real question is not, is virtual learning good or bad, or will it grow? It's how will it grow, and will it help to transform our system, uh, lead to a more personalized, uh, better chance for all students to succeed, uh, or will it just sort of uh, accentuate many of the problems we currently have in our system? So it's, virtual learning by itself is not a good or a bad thing, but it's, it's, it's what are the opportunities that it affords us. So on the, you know, on the, on the downside, uh, right now, our policy is, is really chaotic. Uh, the field is very chaotic. We've got really, really excellent practices, really excellent results for all types of students. And we've got things that are not good at all, that are just clicking on screen. Um, access is highly varied. And in, in fact, this is the part where, where we run the risk of replicating uh, some of the things we have in our current traditional system, where the quality of your education or the access is dictated by your zip code or by your state. So. If you're in Maryland, you, you have few opportunities. If you're in Virginia, you have more. If you're in Florida, you have even more. And, and that makes no sense. Um, now is really the time, while this field is pretty new, to, to really be able to think expansively and think about, again, not virtual learning for its own sake, but how can we use this tool to transform aspects of education that aren't working really well? Uh, remediation is a really great example uh, since virtual learning can cross geographies, uh, we can connect uh, high school with college much better. Uh, make, what does it really take to, to make sure that you're ready for college level courses? And, and don't just guess, but actually take college level content or have uh, content validated across those lines. Um, how can we provide access to all sorts of courses and more quickly get students up to speed? How can we make sure that uh, you know, no matter where you are, you can take high quality physics classes. Uh, but it's, it's, it, it is that access level, but it's also can we, can we move to a, since by its nature, online learning is digital, can we move to a system where we have much more information, we're more easily able to use data, uh, we can use student work or digital uh, uh, representations of that work to, to do better on quality control. It's not just a sort of blunt form testing, but, but much more fine-grained understanding of how funding goes, how students are succeeding or not, make course corrections. I mean, there's all these possibilities that in some ways the digital world affords us. And it's really a policy issue right now about how we think through those really intelligently and, and with a proactive sense.